Alrighty. Hey guys, my name's Tuxudo, and this is Raphael. Uh, we work for Cake Wallet, and we've, over the past year, uh, past six months or so, have been working on implementing a, a big new Bitcoin privacy feature called Bitcoin Silent Payments. Uh, Bitcoin Silent Payments provides good on-chain address privacy for Bitcoin, which is now available inside Cake Wallet. Switching. Oh, looks like it looks like my clicker's not working. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, let's go back. There we go. So, the problem is in Bitcoin. Uh, usually, when you want to preserve privacy in Bitcoin uh, between multiple. Uh, payments that you're going to receive. You usually want to create a whole new address, and that's what a lot of people do when they're concerned about mixing funds in the same address pool, is they'll make a new address in Bitcoin, uh, because anytime you then send a transaction out, or if you receive lots of different transactions in the same address, those can all be mapped together, uh, which isn't good for privacy. And one of the big issues with this is, let's say you have a donation address, right? You put out a donation address. It's a single Bitcoin address, and anyone can just send funds to it. And that, for the most part, might not be a big deal. But let's say there's one person that sends some funds to that wallet that has tainted coins. And suddenly, now your entire wallet becomes tainted because they can all be mapped together. So the solution to this is having an address that allows you to receive funds in a much more private way. And that is what Silent Payments is. Silent Payments is BIP352, and Silent Payments provides very good privacy with initial contact or on-chain transaction, without initial contact or on-chain transaction. Don't, you don't have to think about it. Uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, the transaction scanning, however, can be expensive, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And light client support is not ideal and would definitely give away some privacy. Uh, the goal is to receive multiple transactions to the same address without being concerned about privacy or taint. And that is, this is the GitHub issue for BIP352 created by Ruben Sampson, uh, which has been worked on for quite a while and is now starting to be looked at of being implemented in various wallets. So how that works is the sender will take the silent payments address, which is a new address type, which includes some keys that the sender can use to construct a new address on chain that only the receiver is able to know is theirs. And this is the formula that's used to create and construct a new uh, silent payments, or not a silent payments address actually. On chain, it's a using a taproot address. So the sender takes that silent payments address, takes some keys, creates a new taproot address on chain, that then the receiver is able to scan the blocks and know is theirs by comparing it to their private key. And on receiving, it's similar. It's just the opposite way. The receiver is going to look at blocks and is able to use this formula to know which outputs on chain belong to them, which match their private key. And inside Cake Wallet, this is what it might look like uh, if you're trying to use silent payments. Uh, you've got an option on the bottom to turn it on and off. Uh, and the reason we have a toggle for it right now is because it does require a bit of uh, expensive computation on the phone itself because it's actually got to do some, some work to know exactly which outputs belong to you. So it's actually got to do a lot of scanning of the blockchain. And there's ways to reduce this, we'll, which we'll also talk about. Uh, but right now, it's an option to be on and off so you don't have to use it all the time if you don't want to. And at the moment, if you want to receive silent payments transaction, you'll need to go into the receive screen. And on the top, you can go ahead and tap the top part to change your address type. And you can change that address type to silent payments. And that'll give you a new SP1 address, which then you can give out to people. And they can send you as many funds as you want. And none of them will be linked together just by receiving funds in that address. And as you can see on chain, it simply just looks like some taproot addresses. As you can see, the input and the outputs are just taproot addresses, uh, which is cool. And it makes it easy to, it makes it a lot easier to push this forward as there was nothing required to be changed with 
uh, Bitcoin Core itself. It's not a new address type on chain. It's only a new address type that's used in the client side. But on chain, it's just a taproot address. So no one can even really tell you're using silent payments, which provides even more privacy. So next up, we're going to look at reducing requirements. Uh, and there's several ways you can do this uh, to reduce the load on the client for having to scan all of the transactions that it needs to check to see which ones belongs to the receiver. Uh, you can do that by checking transactions following certain conditions for um, must contain at least one uh, taproot output, uh, must contain at least one input from inputs of shared secret derivation, uh, and there's lots of other ways that you can do that to reduce the load required. And there's, there's a lot of tweaks that can be done uh, that Raphael will talk about, he'll get into, in order to make the client-side scanning much faster. What silent payments won't do? Silent payments will not. It will not coin join, mix your funds for you. It'll not make the amounts hidden. It'll not uh, remove the necessity for coin control. You can still screw up the privacy if you receive multiple transactions to a silent payment address and then decide to send a transaction containing all of the inputs from previous transactions that you received on that silent payment address, that could potentially give away some of the privacy ben benefits that you gained by having the silent payments address and using that in the first place. So it's still advisable to use coin control if you want to be strict and maintain that privacy as much as possible. Uh, but it's at the very least a very good first start into providing a lot more on-chain privacy for Bitcoin and solves that age-old problem of having to create a new address every single time you want to receive funds, which not everybody does, but a lot of people do, and it can be quite a hassle. And this, this makes it a very good uh, improvement for receiving funds for, like, donations and, uh, like, just links. Like, you, you put an address publicly online, you can put a silent payments address and it'd be less of an issue than if you're just putting a regular Bitcoin address like a SegWit type. All right, and that, I'll hand it over to Raphael. Hey, so I'm going to talk more on the technicals or how we got to enable silent payments scanning for KQualit users on mainnet. And First, I wanted to start by the basics and talking about the Bitcoin wallet backend choices out there and how they work with this. So what, they, what this means is basically how users get their balances and transaction histories. So if you, your wallet has the addresses and how you got data from the blockchain based on that. And there's two main approaches out there. One which is more widely adopted is the Electrum server protocol. Oh, um, yeah. And it, it has like it's the most efficient method of you, of querying the blockchain, but it has no privacy. You're essentially asking the server with your addresses all the data, and it knows all of that. You can use the metadata like your IP address, your timestamps, to profile you. And the other one is the B157, 158. It's a little newer. It's more privacy focused, but it has the downside. It, ha it costs more bandwidth because they're essentially based on compact block filters. So you're essentially downloading like a block of transactions and doing the filtering on the wallet. So it's going to be worse for mobile data, for example. So I added some examples here of wallets based on each. So we have Cake Wallet. And you see a pattern on BP157, 158. There's Zeus, there's Blix. It's more common around Lightning wallets, maybe because it's newer. I don't know the reason, but there's also another protocol called Neutrino, which you may have heard of, which is built on top of this protocol of the block filter protocol. So I want to talk about our approach, our challenge of enabling selling payments on the back end. Our idea was mostly to reuse existing infrastructure and to provide this tweak data that you need to scan the, the blockchain. But also, not just that, but being able to spend the transaction that you scanned, right? And without having to, the needs for a new server, a new solution, if you already have your Bitcoin node with our solution, you can just run our Electra-S version, and you have the benefit of running Electrum. You can use that on any wallet. And if you already run Electrum, it's even better. You can add our changes, and it's just going to work like any other Electrum server with the benefit of enabling scanning on your wallet. So the key innovation was this tweak index, which is a new form of storing the, the tweaks you need. Like, 
the calculation you do on the wallet, you need this, the tweaks to do to scan. And we, this is this is not new. This is we didn't make this. It was already being discussed in the BIP. If you read it, it's the storage for client for light clients. And we just went further in, because this approach. Just storing the tweaks, you would need another server in order to find the outputs, in order to get the amounts that you received. So we just added all the data in there. And when you're scanning, you find the outputs, the amounts, the transaction ID. So you can save that and spend the transaction later. But this is all new. We're still like, exploring the fields and seeing how it goes. And we're always open to exploring new options. And yeah, we're open for questions if anyone have any. We didn't get the last slide. If we're able to ask questions, I'm not sure if we can. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, yeah, but what about the um, the challenges we've run into running on the server side, on the node side? Yeah, so there's three versions of ElectRS, which we are using. It's Electrum, the protocol, written in Rust. And we started using the Romans version of ElectRS, which is more of a personal server. It's not made for many users at once, so we have the issues with that. So now we have it supported for blockstream and mempool versions of ElectRS, and that's going to improve it a lot. To, it's made for many users at once. So if anyone runs any of these, you can just add the chains. We have all the code open source on our GitHub. Yep. Yeah, and this is something that uh, we're going to keep improving on. Uh, it's it's very new, so we're we're hoping that other wallets are going to take it and implement BIP three fifty two also because it's great that we're we've integrated it and that you can use it now. But it would be much nicer and much more ideal if other wallets implemented it also, so to really push it forward because uh, it's it's a really big privacy feature for Bitcoin and it's just one part of making Bitcoin more private, but it's a really big one. And the only way it would really branch out and become a much bigger thing is if other wallets do it also. Now, it's cool that it's exclusive to Cake Wallet, but it would be nice if other wallets implemented it also and provides a little bit of universal compatibility between the wallets. Uh, but we're going to be working on uh, making it better, making our, our node situation more stable. It hasn't been the most stable, uh, but we have new uh, infrastructure we're working on, Raphael's working on, uh, that'll be much better, much more stable, and we're going to work on making it scan even faster, um, and it already has been made very a lot faster than what it was initially um, by some of the work Raphael did. And I don't know if you have some of the exact times, but it was really, really slow initially when he first implemented it, uh, but he made it a lot faster by doing some stuff and implementing some other libraries to make scanning way quicker. And now it's, it's quite reasonable. Uh, it's, still, it's still a downside than just using a light client, yes, but there are other inherent privacy issues with using a light client anyway. There's there's some considerations that we might want to take against using a light client with our light RS to preserve the privacy that you're gaining by using silent payments. Uh, but yeah, any any other information, any other things you wanted to mention on that? Yeah, like I said, this is better if others implement this. We wanted to make something that's not exclusive to Cake. So that's why working with Electrum on the base Electrum code and just adding a few changes, we hope we can get him upstream. Uh, but it's it, they, like it requires working with many teams because there's ElectRS. ElectRS has three versions, so there's the Blockstream team, the mempool, there's Romans, which, does, which is a single guy, and then there's Electar Electrum X, which is written in Python, Fulcrum. So it would be better if we had this approach across the board and anyone can just run their version, their like self hosted, provide the service to others for scanning, and yeah, other wallets build on top of this. Yeah, and um, go ahead and if you want to try it now, you can you can go to you can download Cake Wallet now and you can try it and you can create a, a sign up payments address and you can put it like on your website, you can put it on like your social media profile and you can just receive all these transactions without them having a connection together, um, without having to create a new address every time. And a cool feature that you could try in Cake Wallet is called BirdPay, where you can actually put an address on your Twitter slash X bio or your pinned tweet. And you can type your username and the address selection on the Cake Wallet app, and it'll pull that address that you saved on your pinned tweet or your bio. And Silent Payments is perfect for that, so you can just have your Silent Payments on your 
uh, your, like your pinned tweet on your Twitter account, and then you can just type in, you can have someone else type in your username on Cake Wallet, and it'll just pull it up. It's really cool. Uh, so recommend trying that with silent payments. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much what, all we got. Thanks, guys. And I will also mention, we're giving away some jackets over there. Uh, if you want a free jacket, you can go ahead and line up and get one right over there. Uh, we just had a lot of extra jackets from other stuff, but uh, please go take one if you would like. <laughs>